Dear Harstum, I've recently come across the fact that the Zerg race is absolutely stupid. Corruptors cost two supply, while a carrier costs six. The math doesn't simply hold up. There's also the legendary Lurker, which has about 400 of HP and 80 damage. Um, this is an exaggeration by the author of this imbalance complaint form. Late game is simply unplayable. The Zerg has more money, more efficient units, and Vipers make me want to cannon rush every single Zerg, every single game. That's not to mention Spore Crawlers, which are pretty much free and cost zero supply. Maybe we could just try finishing the game before that, huh? Well, I guess not, since Zerg has the Ravager and a baboon can send links cross map to make you go back to your base whenever you try to do something on the map. What do you think? Is it Imba? Or do I suck? Name, Shakti. Race, Protoss, League Grandmaster, and the server is an A. I'm a little bit surprised by this form. Um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have a Protoss complaining about Zerg late game. I usually get the reverse. Second of all, Shakti used to be a Zerg player. So for the people that don't know Shakti, uh, is a Brazilian player that I thought was a Zerg player, but apparently recently, or well, maybe in the past 10 years, has switched to Protoss. I remember Shakti as a Zerg player because in the Intel Extreme Master Sao Paulo 20. 13 or 2014, one of the two, Shakti managed to take out Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty was an American Protoss player who played for the same team as I was playing at the time, which was Fnatic. And he went to Sao Paulo and got last in his group and he lost to Shakti. I remember that because I had never heard of Shakti before and Shakti took out one of my teammates. So it was a, a bit of a shock. Let's uh, put it like that. So the first thing I would say is that if you truly believe that the other race is imbalanced, perhaps change, switch back, you know? You know how to play it from back in the day. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. But on the other hand, Shakti made the honorable move of swapping from Zerg to Protoss. And, uh, you know, maybe he wants to keep the moral high ground. Maybe he wants to feel good about himself. Maybe he doesn't want to feel dirty every day. And no matter how much he showers, the nastiness won't come off because he still plays Zerg on a high level. If that's the if that's the case, then of course you can stick to playing Protoss. And instead, we'll just actually focus on what you asked. And that is whether this is imbalanced or if you suck. Now, in order to research this claim, we'll be looking uh, pretty tightly at everything you'll be doing. I mean, this is Grandmaster level. The standards are high here. You're playing against a player called Gressfren, which I've never heard of. Um, your opener is a gate scout, which means you can't block your opponent's natural. The only scenario in which this is okay is if you actually play Showtime's build order, which is the four adept double or triple oracle, I think it is, with a fast robo into Forge Twilight. This is the only scenario where I kind of like it. I don't know why I like it there, but Showtime does it, so it must be good. Um, I know that is a bit of a fallacy, but I don't really care. I... If Showtime does something, I generally believe he has his reasons for it. And Showtime, whenever he plays that specific Oracle build, almost always opens up with a Gate Scout, rather than blocking the opponent's natural. Whenever I talk with Showtime, I don't completely agree with him on that point, but he does it and Showtime is fantastic. So this is really the only strat I would, you know, I would allow this for. Otherwise, always block your opponent's natural, especially the lower level you get. So at the very top, Zerg players are super optimized and they know exactly what to do when they get blocked, when to build drones, where to send their links, how to move their queens. But just even slightly below that top level, very often if you block your opponent's natural and you, you chrono boost out two adepts and send them across the map, it allows you to just deal so much damage and often get a lead that might just be able to, to kind of translate into a game later on. It gets you a lead that you can leverage into the mid game into a quick win. Uh, instead, we see you just shade in. Thirty-six. So you lost seventy shields on this one adept, and also what is it? Thirty-four of your actual uh, your view HP. You lost a hundred. You got, you took a hundred damage sniping a single creep tumor so far. Good job, buddy. Real nice control. 
Your opponent immediately pulls away. You walk away from your safe space, which is over here. You could have moved back towards this little safe space that you have, but instead you move into the links trying to chase drones. And what do you get? You get a single tumor and a single link for two adepts. This is the worst trade that I've ever seen with two adepts in my entire life. That's very impressive because I watch a crap ton of StarCraft. Second Oracle is on the way and you're actually playing the four adept builder. So I like, uh, I, li I actually do like your build order. I just don't like your unit movement so far. This Oracle should be back home because it should be cleaning up these links. Um, rather than moving across the map. Well, you actually do that. Okay, that's good. It's a little bit late, and at this point, your second Oracle is already out. Your third base should be going down at this point, honestly, um, rather than in five, six seconds from now. Now, once again, we're being quite critical of Shakti, but the reason for that is because he is A, he's an ex-pro player or still a pro player, or at least a very high-level player, and B, he's a grandmaster. So this guy definitely needs to know how to play the game. And... Uh, Delaying your nexus by 10-15 seconds for no reason. Yeah, that's quite a big error, actually, at a high level. Spore is weirdly positioned. Did you just did you just take literally when is it 54 damage on this oracle for no reason? Once again, a lot of damage for no reason. You're also completely broadcasting every move with the oracle that you're making by staying in your opponent's vision. You're even idling in your opponent's vision. Um, completely allowing the Zerg player to move the queens in the correct position to deal with these oracles. This is just... This is extremely impressive what I'm seeing here. The Zerg is defending quite well. You also target four different drones here. You lose one oracle for free. You lose two oracles for free. Okay. So, so far you have killed two drones, three links, and one creep tumor. And you've lost two adepts and two oracles. Your entire opener is kind of focused on dealing drone damage to your opponents with early two chrono boosted adapts, with fast three oracles. The entire purpose of the oracle is to kill drones and to get information. If you're this bad with oracle control, I'd recommend playing void ray openers rather than playing a triple oracle opener. It just really doesn't make any sense to, to play this. If you're constantly flying into your opponent's vision, you're tanking damage for free for no reason. Like, what is this? Like, if you wanted to become like a figure skater or something like that, th that then you should have been practicing for that. But with an Oracle, you want to deal damage. Like, it's, it's not the same. No one's going to give you points for a perfect spin in your opponent's creep or something like that. I, I also like uh, aesthetically pleasing things. And I like beautiful circles and that type of stuff. But... This is not the time with the Oracle, my friend. Your follow-up is going to be Blink. I know for a fact that Showtime doesn't play this because he's not an idiot. Um, so you copy part of his build order. You lose two Oracles, two Adapts. And then you follow it up with Blink. If Showtime is still awake at this hour, then he's probably screaming out loud. He hates this. Blink against Zerg is only good in one scenario. No, yeah, in one scenario. It's a very specific scenario. It's good in the scenario where your opponent doesn't have a brain, has no scouting whatsoever, and took 25 drone damage in the early game. But none of these scenarios happened. On top of that, you're also executing the... What? Give me a second. You're... Hä? Huh? Okay, you open up with... I'm just really confused. I knew the NA ladder wasn't too hot, but this is really pushing it. So you rush out nine gateways, a prism, blink, and plus one. All of these are investments for the super short term. Blink stalkers fall off insanely hard the moment there's more than three ravagers, the moment there's any amount of bane links, just... The moment there's any unit that isn't just a pure roach or a pure ling, the stalker sentry combination against Zerg is hot garbage. It's not even funny how bad it is. You invest at 500 gas in sentries. You're building nine gateways, blink, all of this purely for a blink, and the prism, all of this for a blink stalker attack. And then the moment that you worked up to arrives, you take a fourth base, you, you throw down three extra pylons, you get a Stargate and a Fleet Beacon. Then why did you get the nine gateways and the blink and the five sentries? Gas is the most scarce resource for Protoss in the entire game. 
And you're just wasting it right now. You could have had three Archons at this point, which actually would have been a useful unit going into a longer game. Are you just going to be playing defensive Stalker Sentry here? This has to be the worst thing I've seen in my entire life. What a terrible build order. The worst part is, is that you probably thought it was so smart as well, and that's what pisses me off even more. It's like, ah, oh, the sentries and the stalkers for defense, and I go into carriers. Like, if you want to defend and do absolutely nothing, you build void rays and disruptors. We figured this out years ago, mate. Like, we really have figured this out years and years and years ago. Th this is like showing up in the year, like, 1900. And being happy that you invented the wheel. This is how late you are with this build. Like, we played this in 2012. And even back then, we realized it was complete crap. Ah, that's not completely true. During the entirety of Heart of the Storm, Stalker Sentry was pretty good. But then we wouldn't go into Fast Carrier. Just this entire idea of trying to defend with Sentry Stalker into a late game. It just doesn't really work. Sentry Stalker is inherently an aggressive composition and thus needs to be used aggressively. It's an army that, that wants to fight on the map, the Nye Creep. And, well, to be... F okay, well, it just isn't that good as well. Like, but if you're gonna get it, at least go hard on it and only build Stalker Sentry and you need to all in with it. Then eventually transition into Disruptor or something like that and pretend that you can still play a game. I, I can't remember the last time I really saw Mass Stalker work unless the Protoss had a massive advantage. I think Astrea Lambo on Blackburn might have been the case, but still. It's not even remotely similar to whatever monstrosity it is that you're producing here. I think this is... Uh, this is complete crap. And it's not a small crap, you know? This one is freaking 10 Kurex or something like that. This is a... This is a big crap. I do not like the way this looks. This Oracle is uh, going to revelate at least. Well... It's not going to revelate. I wonder if you actually did anything with these oracles. The first two oracles got given up for free. Oh, you killed like three workers, I guess. So you paid basically 300 resources per drone. 150 minerals, 150 gas to kill one drone with. Because I think you killed three workers total. Very cool. All right. You scout this uh, drop. And you start warping in some stalkers. It's probably a good call. I like that a fair amount. I wouldn't even mind if you get like a cannon here or something like that. Or you send one of your carriers over there. I mean, you have three of them. Uh, if there's drops on the way, you might want to do something like that. Forget to leave a... Uh, oh, that's a good warping, actually. That was just in time. All right. Now that we've talked enough about your initial build order, let's, um, let, let's just forget about that, okay? And just kind of judge the situation for what it is right now. So at this point, you have a... Honestly, you have a decent army. You just got there in a weird way. Okay, you have a decent army plus 10 stalkers, which of course are completely useless. But we'll get... Uh, yeah, we've already handled that. So I don't want to, you know, kind of stick around there. Four sentries, also not great. At this point, I would suggest clearing some creep and trying to see what type of comp your opponent is going for. So you want to know, hey, am I playing against Corruptors? Am I playing against like Queen Infester? Or in this case, am I playing against Lurker? And do I kind of just get handed the free win to me? The Lurker generally is considered the weakest option out of all the Zerg options, especially once carriers are out. Um, the Lurker can only really defend one area. It doesn't attack air either. So yeah, it, it's it's not a it's not a brilliant unit. Uh, this is the type of harass that I love to see. Um, I think you send in eight Zealots to kill an Extractor and then kill another two and a half Hydras. It's uh, nice to see that you really care about being uh, efficient with every unit that you build. First with the Oracles, now with the Zealots. It is a treat watching you control harassment units, my friend. Shakti. It kind of makes sense, though, if you used to be a Zerg player. This is how Zerg players also control their units. Whoa! That's one Archon. Very cool. That actually was a, a very good abduct out of him as well. Now, a good trick to um, not get abducted as much, and this is a pretty high-level trick, is using the Oracle Revelation on your opponent's Vipers. Now, this sounds difficult but in reality you just need to cast a spell like once every what is it 18 or every 20 seconds and you practically have map hack of where your opponent's vipers are um, you can do this with like three oracles or something like that and you'll never get abducted again unless you get caught slightly out of position at least it becomes a lot harder for you to get abducted 
Um, you're kind of blind as well at this point. You have a prism in the middle of the map. I'm not quite sure if this is cosplaying as an observer or if you just want to reinforce this position later on in the game. It's difficult to say what your plans are. Um, because, uh, the, yeah, so far I'm not really sure if you have a plan or if things are just happening accidentally. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad, you know? It's kind of like uh, playing roulette. Except rather than playing roulette, you do this while playing StarCraft 2. Sometimes everything is well, sometimes everything sucks. These carriers will start working on this carry. Hello, carriers. Start working on this lurker, I assume. No? Just wanted to spot it. Make sure it stays in the ground real nice over there. Oh, you killed a stalker. That's good. Don't need those stalkers anyway. Good job, Mr. Lurker. We'll send you a couple more later. How is it possible that this lurker is still going, by the way? There's literally nothing going on in the game. What are you looking at? Okay, you're looking at your main army. You get the notification on the bottom right. Are you just giving up the base? Is it, oh, that's too much to deal with. No. There we go. Okay, so you, you do deal with it eventually. Only took you about half a minute. Oracle is out as well. You have a couple of void rays on the way. Ah, this is kind of relaxing. It's the APM here, 265. It's not even that bad. You just don't do a whole lot. Against lurkers, one of the key objectives is to pull your opponent out of position through aggressive rotations. Especially once your opponent takes a sixth base, very often that is quite easy. Mm, we can, for example, imagine this general area as a as a an avenue of attack for the Protoss. We position our entire army here. This forces the Zerg player with his Lurker Hydra army to make a decision. Hey, do I defend this area? Do I defend this area? Or do I split up my army? Now, if the Zerg player splits up his army, that means that both parts are going to be relatively weak. And then you can start moving towards the right side, try and get this army to move a bit to, to that position. If the Zerg picks this base to defend, you have the left side base to attack. If the Zerg picks the left side base to defend, you have the right side base to attack. So you always want to be looking at these kind of key locations where the Zerg will have a difficult time spreading his army. And, and that's where you want to attack from. The worst angle that you can take would be from here, because this is a really easy angle to cover. The Zerg could just position its army here and would completely shut off this area. Um, even this middle area, I'm not a huge fan of. So you always kind of want to be walking on towards that far left side. Taking out these rocks could be useful, but don't forget that whenever you take out rocks, that also opens up a path um, for your opponent to attack you. So it's not like a, a one-sided affair. I like that you're using Revelation, but obviously we need to see that Revelation on the Vipers more than anything else. The Lurkers are a static unit, or well, not, it's a siege unit, and will not move too much, they will not catch a carrier, okay? There's not a single lurker that has killed a carrier yet. Not in my time of playing StarCraft 2. And the carriers really are the key in your army. So what you want to be doing is making sure that your carriers stay alive, and the best way is to have vision of your opponent's vipers. Not of these two spores, not of the lurkers, no, of the vipers. Because the vipers are going to be responsible, to, responsible for all the out-of-fight damage. So whenever you're not fighting, the only unit that can kill something is the Viper. During a fight, of course, you might want to revelate these Lurkers because it's important to see them. But out of fight, you want to revelate the Vipers. Because so far, I think you've lost three Archons. Maybe one or two Archons and one Carrier, something like that. You're still just moving into the same area again and again. No real aggressive rotations yet. I do like that you're building a lot of cannons. I genuinely think that is good. I wouldn't mind seeing a Templar here either. And... Another cool trick against Lurker is the Mothership. So, um, ooh, 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 let's first wait this fight before I start giving you some more solid advice. Okay, so you lost three carriers there and you killed maybe one Corruptor, I think. Uh, he's rebuilding three Corruptors. Didn't lose any of the Vipers, gets to transfuse. Now, these are obviously not good trades because he's trading energy. Uh, against your carriers. And on top of that, whenever you lose carriers, you need to wait a long time for you to get completely maxed again. Carriers take 64 seconds. Even with the two chrono boosts, that still will be 44 seconds. So that's a long time in which you're not maxed. Losing three carriers at the same time kind of sucks. You're also not continuing your shield upgrades or your armor, your air armor upgrades. Now, let me get back to that mothership idea, okay? So, a cool thing against lurkers, once again, is that they can't be in multiple places at the same time, and they can't fly. That means that 
if you're at a position where the lurker isn't sieged yet, it's really difficult for them to settle down. So if you're attacking this and the lurker still need to come in, that is quite hard for them. And they can't immediately start fighting because they first need to burrow and everything. This is why the mothership is so useful. If you have a mothership on the far right side and your army moves over here or over here, most likely the lurkers will position themselves over here and maybe into this position. That means that the entire right side is open. You recall your main army to the right side, you clear the spores, and then you just kill this base. Rinse and repeat this forever until you kill every single side. This forces the lurker player to stay on a very compact base layout. Rather than taking eight, seven bases, at the same time, they're forced to take a very small amount of bases. And that's exactly what we're not seeing here. Because you're just continuously attacking the same side. I don't think you've once rotated towards the left. You've rotated from here to this location. And once again, this location is completely shut off by just a, a, a single measure of these, of these lurkers moving in positions. What is this fight? I don't even understand how you can lose fights like this. I need to watch this again. You have eight carriers. Okay. You have... You have 16 corruptors, right? I love that these 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 sentries don't even use force field either. Okay, so you lose all your sentries. Then you lose your Archon. And all your Templar. Not a single spell has been cast on these Templar. Look at that. Literally nothing. Not even a feedback or anything. So you lose all your Templar, all your ground goes down, and you killed two Vipers and a couple of Lurkers. I don't even understand how that's possible. You literally just move commanded your Templar into Lurker. Yeah, the Lurker is genuinely quite a good unit if you send Templar into them to eat. But the, the beauty of the Lurker is that it can't chase you that easily. It's a, it's a sieging unit. It holds a position. You don't have to walk into it. Maybe a revolutionary concept for you, but to me this seems quite obvious. Whenever you want to fight this type of fight, try to keep the Templar in a position where they can perhaps feed back Vipers. Um, or just throw down one storm on a chunk of Lurkers and then throw them further towards the back. So you just throw one storm and then move away. That way it won't die, but it still will deal some damage to Lurkers. The main thing, of course, is, is that you don't really want to be attacking into a position that is already set up. If you see that there's 16 lurkers set up and there's 10 spores there as well, perhaps it's a good, a, a good idea to try and attack somewhere else rather than straight up attacking into the same location five more times. Like, th this rotation is also completely useless. Just, I, I hate having to go back in the replay every single time, but... You just attack him here, okay? This is the location you attack him in. Your rotation is to walk all the way towards the bottom here, move up this ramp, and then go here. Your aggressive rotation takes almost 14, 15 seconds, while his defensive rotation takes a second and a half, because all he needs to do for you to walk 15 seconds around is to unburrow five lurkers and put them over here. His spores are already in position as well, and it just makes no sense. On top of that, what you're doing by giving up position in the middle is you're making yourself vulnerable on a base like this, on a base like this. Your entire center is open. Whenever you're making rotations, you often want to keep the sides open because these are easy to defend because you can usually cut them off with a single cannon position. The middle is way harder. Look at this. If these lurkers go into the middle, they could go into the natural. They could go into this space. They could go behind this space. They could go over here. While the sides are way easier to cover. So what you want to do is with your movement is either you have a very good aggressive move or you try and keep the center while you're trying to poke for holes. Here, what would have been a better play from here on out is to just walk, pop, pop over here. And even just being here forces the Zerg player to have lurkers on the left side and lurkers on the right side. That means that the lurkers are already split. And with a lurker count of 12, that means six lurkers on each side. Two lurkers at home as well. So that means five lurkers on each side. Actually, there's some random lurkers sprawled around in other bases as well. It's probably going to be like three or four lurkers on each side. Like, that's almost nothing. That is a completely different type of game, rather than fighting the eight lurkers right over here. 
And this this move is just so stupid. It really just makes absolutely zero sense to me. I don't understand how you can be 5.5k MMR without understanding how an aggressive rotation works. Or what the point of movement in this game is. Like, it is so extremely obvious to me. Like, look. What is he doing? Like, this guy is probably just as surprised as I am here. That you once again decide to attack in here. You attack into a position where the majority of his lurkers are. Where all of his spores are. And where all of his air is as well. You clump up your carriers on top of one another while they're being parasitic bombed. You clump up the void rays as well. And then you're surprised that you lose the fight. Yeah, no crap. If I put a knife in my leg, I wouldn't be surprised that I bleed. That is kind of the... You know, the, it follows from putting the knife in my leg. It's the same here. If you don't micro your units and you attack into a siege up position with a crap ton of static, most likely you're going to lose the fight. Now you warp in stalkers against lurkers. And honestly, the stalkers wouldn't have even been completely useless if you would have at least targeted on the corruptors. But attacking into lurkers is like suicide. The lurker is practically the hard counter to the stalker. It makes me sad to see this. It really does make me sad to see this. Any other unit but the stalker would have been fantastic here. What makes me even sadder is that it's working. Because that kind of legitimizes your beliefs here. And I think I hate that even more than... Crap, this is a terrible fight. There's no shot that you actually watch this replay, right? You're down 10k in resources lost. I didn't even know that was possible. I think I could fight fights with my eyes closed and have better resources lost than you do. I don't even need to storm. You could just A-move an Ertos army and have better fights than you. This is really crazy to watch. I often joke about negative micro... But I don't think negative quite quite covers it. This is like Kelvin levels of micro. It's like so far below zero. It's like this is cold, my friend. This is awful. Okay, your opponent gets a couple of lurkers. Stalkers bring forward. I do like uh, some of the moves that you're making here with the do I? Let me let me go back here. Okay, so at this point you have a lot of stalkers. You have a little a bit of momentum behind you. You're outmining your opponent in a significant way. You're up 20 workers. So at this point you're not really maxed out. You have a lot of supply in production structures. But you know your opponent also had a lot of supply in corruptors. So maybe this isn't even that bad. That blink forward isn't great. Because that doesn't allow you to run away anymore. And if you get surrounded, that could be annoying. Um, these stalkers also aren't joining up with the main army, which kind of sucks. All of these stalkers kind of just get blasted here, I guess. There's a couple of observers with that army. Yeah, it, it wasn't a good trade. It really wasn't a good trade. It was a terrible trade. But it still doesn't... It still feels fine for you, honestly. Like... Despite everything that you've done wrong this game, which is a lot, um, you're still in a position where you're up in income. Good lord. Um, sorry, where you're up in income, you have good enough tech to really win this game at any point. You have map control. You're you're clearing, you know, you're clearing creep and stuff like that. It's really not that bad. Your opponent can never really catch you. I mean, he has seven lurkers and 27 corruptors. Hey, this is one of these things as well. Like, I understand if this happens at like in like lower level games where people just don't think and they just they're like, oh, I like the void ray. That's a cool unit. But you're a grandmaster player. You have a mess stalker army. Your opponent currently has seven lurkers and 26 corruptors. You know your opponent is practically broke and has an inferior economy. Why would you build the one unit that he already has a counter against? That just doesn't make any sense. Disruptors at this point, Immortals, Zealot, Archon, Storm, um, Adepts, DT, like everything at this point would be better than Void Rays because all of these units would contribute to 
attacking the weakest part of his army, which is the anti-ground army. His anti-air army is insanely strong, but his anti-ground is almost non-existent. And worst of all, it's pure lurker. So why, why would you continue with your void ray production? No, you transition out. You don't always have to go back to void rays. It's not necessary. Look at this bad boy. And the Zerg believed that there was going to be an observer there. Scared the ever living crap out of him. I really did. There's still a lot of money for you in the bank. So like a single Zealot Warpin or something like that. Okay, this should be a good fight. I think. Super battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good fight. I like that fight. I like that you took that fight. Okay, maybe we can micro this. Maybe. I micro them nicely into two spores. So only lost one void ray in the end because the parasitic bomb ran out. But I feel like... Yeah, okay. You pulled them back. Good job. Nice. Get some Archons, 11 Zealots. I like that you now recognize that void rays are not going to be the answer. Although void rays are not the answer, I still don't think we should be throwing them away for free into a, a wall of spores. But that might just be me being crazy here. This is a difficult fight to lose. But the one way you could lose is by not having detection. So I think the Oracle car he call here is very good. I also like that you're quick to realize that attacking into lurkers without having detection isn't that useful. So you quit it immediately. It's an interesting blink forward. This is the type of game as well where I think like a zealot run by towards the left side is super useful. Because literally all he has is a couple of lurkers to defend with. Um... The Void Rays, you can kind of keep them at home for defense against, like, Lurker run buys. Well, hello? Where's the detection? Oh, no. Okay, we move up a ramp here. We're kind of cornering ourselves right now. Our, another Oracle gets sniped here. That means we don't have detect... Okay, this is an interesting call. He could have also walked into the main base, stayed on top of the ramp, and then maybe recalled majority of his army. But I guess losing 12 stalkers and getting damage on all your Archons might be considered a, a better play by Shakti into losing all your Archons. I can't believe these Vipers are actually dealing damage. It's crazy. Shakti still is ahead here. It, this Zealot run by is quite good. I like it. It's hard to believe, but he's really still ahead at this point. Um, because the majority of the army consists of Corruptors. The only thing Shakti needs to do is buy time. And... Wait, did he build four more Void Rays? Stop with the Void Rays for real, dude. Is, 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 is buy time and get, like, Disruptors out or just an Immortal Army? Like, just anything that, that is good in the ground. So, basically, just not Stalkers. Like, everything but Stalkers would be fantastic here. It really would be. That's another good move command. Really do like that. Do you say you have detection? Okay, yeah, it does have detection. It's not going to be a good fight, is it? Okay, double parasitic bombs. So all the void rays that he built in the past two and a half minutes get absolutely blasted. There's still 17 corruptors left over. And the entire ground army gets blasted. GG. I'm not even sure if that's necessary here. There's 16 lurkers. That is a bit much, maybe, to fight at this point, but... I mean, there's so many cannons here. You still have decent mining on the left side. You have good mining over here. You have full mining in this base, full mining in this base. You have 1,700 in the bank. You could send in a zealot, zealot run by with like an observer or with one of your two oracles to clear this base. You could take out the lair for practically free. I don't think this was over, but I also don't think you would have won it. I just think it required someone with more than double-digit IQ. Um to win this game okay so I'm, I'm just gonna go read through your claims again because it is all a bit much for me so you talk about spore crawlers which are pretty much free and cost zero supply um you say you can't finish the game okay Th this people do this a lot they say um maybe we could just try finishing the game before we get into the late game but it's not possible because zerk has ravager and he can send links across the map to make you go back to your base this type of stuff I don't really like if it doesn't happen in the game. Like, you can't simulate 
uh, some 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 game in your head and then tell me about it. You'd be like, well, in my mind, if I attack him with a, a stalker push, he'll just push me back and I can't win. So I'm forced into this. Like, in, in that case, you'd first need to show me that that actually happens and that it's impossible to attack and that there's no player in the world that attacks Zerg before they get into Lurker, Viper, Spore. Like, the one thing that, that Zergs don't like about the Viper is... Um, isn't even necessarily that they die with it, but it's the fact that they need to stay super compact in general um, and that they need to build a lot of roaches in the early game to survive. And the roach is just a unit that as Zerg you usually don't really want to be building because it falls off so hard. So they need to throw it away somehow. You didn't even try to attack, so you're not allowed to complain about Zerg being too strong defensively. Like if you sit on your bum all day building cannons, void rays, carriers, and a couple of stalkers for whatever reason, you don't get to complain about that. That's not cool. Your your build order. So let, let's just let's just do this uh, systematically, okay? So we have your build order, your mid game, I guess, and then we'll, we'll take a look at your overall decision making and your little attack paths that you took. Your early game, your build order, honestly, was quite good. I liked your your first five minutes until you started blink. I actually think everything you did up until that point was practically perfect build order wise unit control not so much you lost all the harassment units and i think that is an issue in the when you're playing a build that is very harass intensive with oracles adapts and all that type of stuff you need to be good with them so you either need to practice that a lot or you just give up and you start playing void ray openers because you don't have to be as active with those on the map they're kind of fine by themselves clearing an overlord here and there taking out a hatchery something like that so i like the build order i didn't like the execution your mid game i don't really want to talk about you build stalkers while tacking into fleet beacons you would have died against any decent queen wall because there were no disruptors you would have died against any decent roach max pretty sure you also would have died against swarm host hydraling bane maybe ling bane queen like honestly you seemed safe against absolutely nothing and you set yourself up for a bad mid-game push as well. Usually we do these pushes with like three to six carriers these days. You had no possibility to do that. You had like 10 minutes with seven carriers. Hey, that's that's really quite bad. So that entire part I didn't like. Then, so yeah, on that, you, you're you god-awful. Uh, garbage, hot trash, whatever you want to put there. It's all awful. Not good. Then your, the, the way that you attacked and the way you use your army is, I think, where I had the most issues with your entire play, with everything you did, basically. You kept attacking into the same angles again and again. You never even threatened once to attack the left side of the map. You were continuously moving on the right side and also the same angles there again and again and again. Once a lurker player is set up, he's set up and you can't just walk in there with Templar and try to storm it and right click on spores you got parasitic bombed every single fight your splits were god awful you lost more templars than i can count on my 10 fingers and my 10 toes combined that's 20 so <laughs> it's a lot of templar you lost there buddy you lost so many oracles you constantly lost observers into spores you lost void rays into spores it, it really looked like you were trying your best to lose the game and then when you succeeded you got upset so for the neutral spectator who watched that game, it felt like you were trying to throw or someone paid you to fix this ladder match or something like that. And then you send this this balance complaint at the at the end. It makes absolutely no sense to me because you tried your absolute best to lose it. Um, yeah, your attack paths genuinely sucked. The Lurker also, out of all the units that the Zerg can build, I think is generally one of the worst units. It's really difficult to use for the Zerg against a Skytos army. You really require good control with Corruptor Viper. You need decent creep spread. You need good spore movement and good understanding of where to defend. Honestly, the Zerg just completely outplayed you, my friend. This had nothing to do with Zerg being imbalanced and everything to do with you sucking. That's going to be it. You suck. All right, that actually is going to be it for today's episode of Is it Inba or Do I Suck? If we have another Protoss that gets kicked into the bin. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this episode. And if you did, don't forget to like, but subscribe to the channel. And I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.